All right. So we are, well, our name is not that um, we didn't have much fantasy in our name, so we are OIE CBS, but our real name is OIE Perso because we are the Society Trip Committee and we decided to, we can go to the next slide. Um, we decided, yeah, to do this video in order, next slide. <laughs> okay, to um, do an informative video about uh, South Korea, since uh, our plan is to go there um, in August, hopefully. Um, so we decided to put the two things together since we have to do anyway all the work about fun finding out um, what's the culture there and what are the difference between us and them. And um, also we wanted to do some a little bit informative video about how we were uh, planning to organize like the, the step by step how we were uh, doing this basically the, the study trip because maybe that could also help other CBS students to organize their own study trip. So yeah that was uh, what we wanted to offer so the value would be information and we decided also to put some fun parts in each video to make it more appealing to our audience um, and um, yeah next slide our revenue stream, next slide, <laughs> uh, will be through advertisement and collaboration. So basically what we thought is that in our fourth video, for example, we did a collaboration with the Copan Rice, which is a Korean restaurant, um, South Korean restaurant in um, Copenhagen. Um, so our plan is that when our community will grow and we will become, we will have a lot of popularity and um, a lot of visibility, then we can earn um, money through those collaboration with restaurants or museum or company that we will visit here in Copenhagen or there in Seoul because we will offer in our page, um, in our video uh, or in our channel, whatever, um, some space to advertise their companies or their uh, restaurant, museum, whatever. So um, now we did like, of course, completely free with coupon rice, but uh, in the future, um, maybe those restaurant could like pay us to go there to advertise, um, to advertise it, some, some kind of like influencer, testimonial, something like that. Next slide. Okay. Next slide. <laughs> so we did a partnership with We Like to Move It and also with the CBS Dance School. Um, so uh, since uh, we like to move it, decided to do this uh, YouTube channel about exploring the different dance styles. We wanted to partner up with them to explore the world of Cape, which is a huge wave um, in uh, South Korea. And so we asked the CBS Dance School to set up a, a dance class just for us. And there was this really nice student from Seoul, I guess, Anna, if you can help me, because she was the contact, but I think that she was from South Korea. So uh, that, if yeah. Kevin knows she's not from Korea, but like she has been just a big fan and started to do um, Korean dancing two years ago. But oh. just a note. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so yeah, we did this collaboration with them. And uh, we did a video that will be out next week, so stay tuned. Um, and we had a lot of fun. And uh, uh, it's crazy that what we learned from this, besides like having a lot of fun dancing and trying to learn the moves, is that this cape of music is actually so close to our own music, uh, our own pop pop music. So it was for me at least crazy to um, see that we are not that different culture. It's kind of like a lot of a global culture. Uh, next slide. And then 
we did, as I said before, um, collaboration with Copa Rice, uh, because, and we went there uh, for dinner. We had an amazing dinner there, and we also managed to interview the owner, uh, who's a girl that moved here a few years ago from Seoul. And um, she's uh, importing in the, or exporting, depending from the view, um, the traditional Korean bowl in Copenhagen. Um, and you can see the interview in our last video. And then we also explored the Korean Carol culture. And we went to Sam's Bar, which is a bar in Copenhagen City Center. We did a collaboration also for them because we they reserved a room just for us, so we could, uh, and we invited all CBS, so, uh, sorry, all, all IE student to join us, just to try to see how is the karaoke is uh, in general, since it's such a big thing in uh, South Korea. Next slide. Okay, so in this case, um, we had a bystand dilemma. So basically, at the beginning of our project, uh, what we wanted to do was, uh, as I said, an informative um, channel. But then it turned out to be just fun, and it turned out to be just us trying food or, um, yes, giving some tips, but uh, it was not that informative. It, the content was not that um, meaningful as we wanted to it to be um, and we had to take a step back and we had or to take a base by stand uh, because we needed to reflect on where we were going so where our process was, was taking us and because we were not happy with the results of our videos and that's why if you see there is a time gap of more than one week between our fourth and fifth video because in that week we have like to talk through and to think about a lot what was going wrong and um, what we came out was that it was not a problem of communication because we were communicating quite good and um, it was more due to external factor because we wanted to include details about how we were building the study tree but coronavirus stopped us um, and then other formalities like documents that uh, the um, international office should have approved us uh, like two months ago and they just came in. So um, it was, uh, we didn't have enough information to do so. And that's why we decided to go in the direction of fun uh, instead of informative because we don't have enough information. Next slide. Hey, so yes, our tool was a psychological sense of community, uh, which was very strong because we really felt like, you know, the study trip committee members, they, our um, friends voted for us to be there. So we really felt that we have a strong emotional connection to uh, the group uh, and also a strong commitment because um, we felt like that our community or the, our subscriber or uh, the people that were joining to the study tube was really counting on us to fulfill um, all the steps that we had to fulfill <laughs> in order to uh, go to um, so. So I think that this strong feeling of um, community um, was very good internally because that um, because we were able to communicate with each other a lot um, and also when we were unsatisfied with our results we managed to uh, find a solution and uh, to really understand what was wrong and why uh, that was happening next slide yeah main learning um so yeah as i said through all the presentation um we recognize how YouTube was uh, um, is a key side when we talk about participatory culture because it is it is really like the fundamental one of the fundamental el uh, elements when you want to uh, build a community, and then 
uh, as I said before, when we were talking about the project, we realized that the, there were a lot of move and follow speak chat, and uh, we lacked a lot of oppose. Um, and the bystand came necessarily later because at the beginning we didn't know uh, that we had to bystand. And on. Next slide. And yes, then we analyze with the meta learning model our group, and we um, we thought we uh, yeah we thought that we were uh, performing as medium performance team because we had a good balance of inquiry, advocacy, and order self. So we were doing really good, but uh, still we were not happy with our results, and we believe that um the lack of that was because we were not able to sustain the benefits of those this balance so we didn't know how to pursue our goal but the good thing that we believe is that uh, the problem do not lie in communicational or relational issues but on external factor that we were not able to control and i think that's it next slide i guess yes I think the very last thing you said was uh, very interesting, uh, this thing about, um, I, th I think it really like um, something that's probably going to play a big part in your uh, paper is this whole thing about dealing with external factors. Because uh, that's very interesting, right? It's like, um, so you, you uh, there was something about the, um, what you call it, uh, improvement from, from the study board and, <coughs> and the whole thing about coronavirus that sort of um, made it impossible for you to f follow your initial plan. And I'm very curious how, like you're talking about how, uh, I think it's very right that you had a strong internal community also when, you know, you see you guys together, it's like you, you um, it makes sense that there is that real community you see it and um and and then you say that that somehow helped you make that shift and find a solution and i think it's very important to sort of like dig in like why is a shared emotional connection how does that contribute uh how does like the the other bits how does that actually contribute does that make sense I think maybe to answer on that, it contributes somehow in on the point of motivation because you don't if you if you're in a group where you don't have a very good um, um, emotional coherence and like something bad happens, then you might tend to the to go to the point to say, ah, oh, well, let's just do something. And when you still have an emotional coherence, you can talk about things and you can also go very good into the critical things and find a common understanding about how to overcome it because you already have that common sense behind it so yeah. you think somehow similarly so you also which is not always good of course but at least in that point because you um you go on your team yeah exactly and <clears throat> and it's also interesting because shared emotional connection also like if you remember it's like it comes out of not just sharing positive experiences but also sharing challenges yeah so it becomes this like positive cycle it's like there is that connection which enables you to to sort of like pull together and yeah. like said, how do we deal with this and when you do that that uh, further increases this um, uh, connection but really when you describe it in your paper see how concrete and detailed you can become mm -hmm. it's really like keep asking why it's like how does it what is it with the shared emotional connection what does what exactly does it make us do that we wouldn't do otherwise and be as concrete and keep asking why or you know narrow it down 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 because that's where you find the really uh, interesting things yeah cool any other <coughs> questions or comments for this group then it is polling time uh, boom here we go, one minute and go.
25. So I'm especially curious about the people who actually uh, signed up to go on the study trip. <laughs> In some sense, they must uh, see the channel as a community they can be a part of, but yeah. And four, three, two, one. Cool. <coughs> End the poll and share the results. So here you've got the results. Boom, boom, boom. You can take screenshots. Can you say them out loud because I can't see it? Uh, okay, yeah, the first one uh, interacted with this channel, 52% yes. Uh, does the channel offer a community you would be a part of? 63% yes. Uh, have you recommended this to a friend? Only 30% yes. Uh, would you invest in this organization team? 44% yes. Okay, thank you. Cool, and that is, uh, let's see, uh, 27. Uh, answers. Cool. <laughs>